All right, we survived our, our well, how long were we in there? About an hour and a half <laughs> into uh, Home Depot. It was pouring rain when we got here, but the rain had stopped. Um, we ended up buying a pre-sanded uh, two by four block, but you can see it's not a uh, two by four sheet of wood because I actually went in there and drew out from the plans, the measurements here to cut, you know, to cut the um, battery box. And luckily for us, the um, Home Depot guy, the staff member, actually cut it for me. So all I'm gonna have to do is assemble the box out here and then we can actually try to house the battery box and give her power. And then we can start building the van itself. Great. Thankfully the sky has cleared up somewhat. So we're actually gonna be able to try to get some work done. These are all the, the panels that I had measured inside the store. And you can see I've marked them like side, top and whatnot. Um, and it actually came out perfectly. We were able to get one two by four sheet uh, that is already sanded. And we're gonna use that as the battery box to hold her two batteries that we bought. And my um, experience from building the um, portable toilet for Little Blue 2 came into play here. We were able to build the, um, or get the boxes cut to size to fit, and we're in process of assembling it. Sierra's uh, back inside Home Depot buying uh, the correct size um, uh, drill bit because this is slightly too big. We want it to um, be smaller than the number eight one the number eight screws here so that it'll be a tight fit this is going to be a little too big so we want one a little bit smaller and then we're going to assemble the units here but as you can see we're going to use a power drill here so we're going to install her inverter not not permanently but temporarily to create 120 volt power to run the drill right so the first thing i did was i actually uh Opened up her box here that's ever start. I think we paid $50 or so, $40 or $50 for the 750 watt inverter. And it came out like this with the connections here. So we're gonna hook black, which is the negative, to black and red to red for the positive. We're just gonna unscrew this stuff right here and then put this in and then just hook it up to the battery to give itself uh, 120 volt power. And as you can see, I've installed the uh, inverter, Sierra, inside there. Hi. Has uh, started up the vehicle. Just to show you how we're getting um, 12 volts to turn into 120 volts, for those of you who are new to this. Our car is running right now, and the reason we have it running is so that her alternator will charge up the battery right here, her vehicle battery. And we're going to pull the battery power into this inverter, which will convert the 12 volts to 120 volts. Now we're gonna turn the unit on. Well, actually this plug that you see here is from an extension cord that I have going to the back, which you'll see back there is hooked up to the, um, the power drill. But we're gonna go ahead and turn the unit on. And this thing actually has a pretty cool readout. So with the vehicle running, it says 14.5 volts, which is normal, 14.5, 14.8 is what you usually say somewhere in between that range. And when the battery itself is fully charged without the engine running, it'll usually read like 12.8. That's normal. So 14.5 is what it's saying, which is great. So we're going to leave it on right now. We're going to go back to the back and we can use it. So you can come on back here and you can watch this. So I've got my cheap, this is a really cheap drill. <laughs> it's a Walmart drill, okay? But it works. And I think this... Okay, you can see that we can run it. You can see no problem running it. Okay, because I don't know what the rating on this thing is. It says it uses, um, was it 3.2 amps? I don't know. I know that uh, 750 watts runs this as long as I don't hold it down too much. Just to show a little hole. Was that it? That was your thing beeping? I don't think that. I was gonna have was that a car? The car? It could have been the thing beeping because I might have been pulling too much power. Okay. So it has like overload protection on it. So if it beeps or something like that, it could be this. I might be pulling too much power. But essentially we're gonna go ahead and try to drill some holes here and assemble um, the battery box. So hang on a moment and I'll go ahead and um, stop the filming and <laughs> resume later. Actually assemble anything. I'm doing a mock-up to make sure everything's gonna fit the way it's supposed to. You can see I've marked everything, bottom, sides, top, whatever. This is the top panel. And you can see that the sides here don't, actually line up evenly 
And the reason that happened is we ran out of wood, but it worked out to our benefit um, because we're going to leave a gap. What the plan is, is to leave a gap along the top for air to blow or the bottom. On that side, we're going to have this up at the top like this evenly. And we're going to have a gap on the bottom there so we can run the cabling out from underneath. And on this side, the gap will be on the top. So the plan is, while she's driving and the system is charging, air will hopefully blow through the bottom. Or we might put it on the, yeah, we'll have it blow through the, um, the bottom. Actually, it'll come through the top over there. It'll come through the top. No, it'll come through the bottom. It'll come through the bottom, which is where the opening is, and then it'll come out through the, um, the top over here and blow out the back. Or we might go the other way. Um, clamp down on it right now. So this tip is going to be used to connect this portion right here to her red. And then the other part is going to be connected to the, um, the cabling that, we're, you know, that we converted from the um, jumper cable. At least that's what the plan is. Okay, stop. Stop. All right, stop. But it's all right. It's not going to be really that noticeable. No one's going to really notice this stuff. Now, since I have you on film, then, um, how about using wood putty to uh, put it over mistakes and then sand it down? I don't know if you want to do that. I'll let you do that. <laughs> I mean, is that, is that an option for fixing those little, the tiny little cracks? You can, but I, I wouldn't even bother. Okay. I wouldn't bother with something like this. Okay, so here we have the, um, the completed battery box other than the lid. And the way it's going to work is this. It's going to go up along this way. And we're going to let the opening up here at the top pull the air in. I don't know if air is actually going to blow and come up and come through here, but that's what the plan is. And, um set this box, although I'm having a hard time here, I wonder if this went a little too short, uh oh, <laughs> you know what I did wrong, we'll fix it, alright, yeah. <laughs> I decided to do a test fitting here on the, um, the battery container and see a problem here, I had made both the top and the bottom exactly um, uh, 15 by 15, the problem is, and this wants to sit inside here at 15 by 15, which actually, wait, maybe that'll work. <laughs> maybe I can make it work. Maybe we can make it work at 15 by 15. I was going to say it'd be better to make it um, 16 by 16 on the top so that it can flip over like this. But I might be able to make it work this way anyways. We'll, we'll see. Let me try it out and see what happens. All right, I just wanted to show what's currently going on with this unit. I have um, drilled four holes here to mount and secure this battery box to the, um, was that the uh, frame thing that we put up, the hitch. And we decided to put it in the center instead of the side originally as planned because when you put it on one side, it tilts, the hitch tilts because it's lopsided. So we're going to mount the battery here for now and it could be moved around as we add other components. So we'll have to leave a little bit of slack too. Um, if we can put the, um, what is it, the generator over here on this side, we might have to move the battery over there to kind of offset the balance. Or the generator may come over here on this side and then the battery over on that side because we want that door to open. That was the other consideration. But anyhow, how I drilled the hole was I actually went up underneath. I don't know if you can see it here, but I actually uh, crawled up underneath here and looked and then I marked 
where there was an opening with the um, pencil and I drilled it from the bottom. You know, I flipped this unit over and drilled it from the bottom. It's a lot easier than trying to drill here blindly and then hitting the metal plates underneath. So, for the metal grilling there. And that's how we did that. Um, Sierra is currently inside the Home Depot getting the lid made because I screwed up. I had made the lid um, 15 by 15, which was the exact same measurements as the bottom one. But on the top, we want the lid to cover this side. You know, the, the walls here, instead of fitting inside. So it needed to be 16 by 16. So she's getting a new piece made. And we're gonna take the old piece and use it to make something else, maybe a little table or shelving or something. Now I am going to take this piece right here and I'm going to cut just a little bit tip off here to make it fit so it's a tight fit. And we're gonna use this as a battery divider so that there's two compartments in there to hold two batteries. So I currently have my jigsaw hooked up and I'm getting ready to cut the line where I marked here just a little bit to make this, uh, this piece here fit inside the um, battery case to hold it. So all that remains to be done right now is to power up the vehicle. And the reason we're powering it up is we want the alternator generating electricity for this battery that's hooked up to the inverter, which we're about to start up. Right now it says 12.6, 12.5. That seems to be her, um, her normal, what her battery normally holds is 12.6, 12.5. 7, 12.8. But we're going to go ahead and um, start up the vehicle. I'm going to turn this off for now. I'm going to start the vehicle up and then we're going to start up the um, power inverter and then we'll be able to use our drill. All right, the vehicle has been started. I'm going to turn on our inverter. It does have a nice readout, which is awesome. So it says 14.3 again because that's what the alternator is generating. And so we have electricity at this point that we can use and we're hooked up to the drill, I mean not the drill, the um, jigsaw, and I'm going to use that to cut that. Now obviously I can't film and cut in Sierra, it's not here to film, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it right now and go ahead and do the cutting. As you can see I cut off the little piece that was uh, on here at the end. So we're going to be able to um, flip the unit over and install the, um, the divider. Let's do that. All right, we got the vehicle, we got the battery mounted. The box is mounted. I have um, I have put some bolts down there. I don't know if you can see it here, but I basically used um, a bolt that went through and then a washer to help secure it in place. So there's four of them, one in each corner. And now we put the batteries in and we're taking that extra piece of wood in the middle there, just to make two compartments for the batteries so they don't, you know, hopefully don't bump into each other. But we're going to put screws in here to kind of secure that metal, not metal, but that middle piece so that we have two separate components, I mean two separate compartments. And then it's just a matter of wiring the house battery system. Woohoo! See, we've um, attached the hinges to our battery box. So we can open it up now. And what we're going to do is attach the lock on this side so we can lock the unit down to secure it. And that should be pretty much it for the battery housing. You can see the vent hole here. See along the top? I mean along the bottom there's a vent hole down there. On the bottom, I don't know if you can see through the crack there. There's a vent hole down there. And then over here, there's a vent hole along the top right here. So, that's what we did to try to make venting. It's a little bit off here, but that's alright. It's no big deal. Little hole is fine because we want the uh, the fumes to come out.